Sarah. Can you make my hair look like this? Oh, man, what you want to make your hair look like that for? <laughs> See, that's the problem with y'all today. Y'all don't know nothing. Will you let the man tee off? You yap worse than six barbers. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Your Barber Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Belot, a.k.a. Matty Blaze on Instagram. We're up to episode number 41 right now. If you're new to the show, please subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate all the support. Um, today, my guest, I mean, if you speak Portuguese, he's got you. If you speak Spanish, he's got he's your guy. If you speak English, he's got you covered too. I want to bring a warm welcome to my guy coming from Miami, Florida, down in the 305. His name, Gray Art. Howdy to the show, my man. Welcome to the show. Howdy, what's going on, man? How's it going today? Everything's good, man. First thing first, appreciate you having me, bro. Thank you, man. I appreciate you making the time. I think you worked today, right? Yeah, I should have did one in for a little bit. Yeah, you got one in, right? <laughs> said- yeah. You yeah, normally man. off on Monday? Yeah, usually I'm off Sundays and Mondays. I try to take off, but there is um certain clients. So in the woman in the women's fields, it's different in the shop. One client in the barbershop probably won't make a big, big difference. No, yeah. And the women, one client could be a big bag. You feel me? So a hundred percent. Yeah, we'll get like, we'll get into that. I, I'm gonna <laughs> so Dre Dre seems to deal a lot in women's hair these days. So uh, right. just get ready for a bunch of dumb barber questions. <laughs> 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 but uh, how uh, I got introduced to Dre was uh, back from, I guess, I think it was episode 26, possibly, Zeno down in Boca right. Raton at right. a New Era's barbershop. Um, he, he, right. he pointed me your direction, and I thought this would be a kind of a new frontier for me. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It was definitely here. Real quick, before I get before we get any further in your background, I always like to do a opening segment. It's called Just an Observation, and yeah. uh, typically, typically it's a situation in the shop or something going on in the industry. Right now, one of the uh, hot uh, topics in our industry right now is <laughs> the Styles Craft instinct is blowing up on everyone's station right now. Blowing up, yeah. I mean, it's turning into a flamethrower and literally exploding. Have you the, heard about what, this yet? The, the what? No, I'm not familiar. What's that? The Stylescraft Instinct. No, I'm not really the sure. Clipper. Here, let, let's just pull this thing up real quick while, while we uh, while Instagram works. All right. Let's check this out. I can't believe you haven't seen this yet. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what they're going to do coming back from this, but. Was that a clipper? Wow. Instinct <laughs> blown what up. What was that? Not a, that was a clipper that blew up. Yeah, here's another one. It's the same clipper. So you know, I thought it was kind of like a one-off type thing, and then it happened again. And I guess it keeps happening. It's that clipper right there. What brand is that clipper? Styles Craft. Or gamma. Oh. Yeah, so that's it right there. Um, I haven't messed with them. I, I do know some people that uh mess with them. But so uh I've I've been cutting for a long time, so I'm like I'm more of an old school guy. Because since I left the shop, I'm still cutting with the court master. I'm still using the yeah. uh the the court uh uh detailer. So I'm not really familiar with the cordless clippers. I use like that's like the neutral. When I when I left the barbershop, if you are not mistaken, the most um talk about edges was the baby list, the gold one, the cordless one. Right. So those still, those were just introduced to the barbershop. Yeah, are they? Okay. Yeah, still so pretty they, dominant. Those were the one that everybody was hopping on when I kind of yeah. left the barbershop. You know what I mean? So I really didn't follow up on the new trends and stuff because i was moving on to sign new 
Right. So I just I mean, how often do you use your clippers these days? Every week. Every week. I still still cut. Yeah, I still cut some of my old clientele. Yeah. Okay. I got about I don't know maybe fifteen guys clients still. I was gonna say, in doing that, like, how hard was it to kind of let go of some clients, or did you just kind of? Ah, it was. It was hard. More and more unavailable until they kind of peeled off. Exactly. Not only that, I also moved. So once I moved down, I moved like an hour south from where I used to cut in the shop. Okay, where'd you live in Florida before? Um, I grew up in a city called Deerfield. Okay. It's like, um, if you're familiar with Florida at all, now. No, not not too much. Okay. Not too crazy. So Deerfield, Deerfield, we'll Deerfield is like a city. I would probably say twenty minutes north of Fort Lauderdale, and okay. it's the next city south of Boca Raton, where Zeno works at. I mean, ah, I got you. Yeah. Okay, so, so it's a little south of that. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, Dre. Yeah. Um, I wanted to pick your brain on. I don't know if you've heard in Georgia, they're trying to get rid of the requirements to have a barber license or to have a nah, cosmetology yeah. license or trying to get rid of it all together, which, um, what, what's your thoughts on that? Like, what's your take on just saying, let's I, just take all this stuff away. Let anyone cut hair. You think it's nah, a good thing or nah, a bad I don't thing? think it's a, I think it's a bad thing. Yeah. Definitely um, a bad thing. If you ask me, I didn't hear, I didn't hear about it, but for sure, for sure. To me, it's a, it's a bad thing. Cause, um, I wasn't one of those bars that, that started cutting uh, in a Porsche or anything like that. Yeah. I played around with clippers on myself, you know what I mean? And maybe right. like one of my boys, I had Jamal here and there, but nothing compared to like, you know, as a, as a actually backyard barber, I was never that. Yeah. But I feel like even though if you start in the backyard, I feel like going to school will teach you more than just grabbing clippers and put it on uh, the guards on it. You, you see what I'm saying? I feel yeah. like it's, it's more than just that sanitation. Uh, I don't know if you, how it is right now in school, but I remember in our chapter, we learned a lot about skin disease. We learn about um, stable or stuff like that also, you know, but of course, yeah. if you don't go through any of that in school, I don't think the average person would not educate themselves at home. Yeah, especially barber. Barbers are known to being lazy. I mean, you can agree on that with me. So, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Come on, man. So, um, yeah, yeah man. I don't. I'm not. I don't agree on that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it kind of brings it all together, right? The schooling. Mm-hmm. Once you get you know fully certified, it kind of yeah. wraps everything together that you need to know. And people from the outside looking in that might see that bill and be like, oh, you know, let's just yeah, let barbers cut without a license i don't see no, the problem like in it and it's yeah. like they don't know that we even study all that chemistry there's gonna, and there's gonna be or... there's gonna be barbers getting sued left and right man <laughs> yeah yeah we're, we're holding <laughs> sharp objects i do i do believe that they could cut down the amount of hours that people how many hours yeah. you guys are required in georgia it's uh 1500 okay we it usually we seems to be 12, 12 or 15 yeah we did 12 that's yeah. right we did 12 but i do believe that you could cut that in half i yeah. feel like there was a lot of things that was like like um i would probably say the chapters of, of the books like we had chapters that i was like the fuck I, i'm sorry, sorry. Like, I'm, I'm sorry no, I, no you're good dude. anything <laughs> goes anything goes. okay um it's like what the fuck is this <laughs> Right. <laughs> what am I learning um, about like covalent the, bonds? The nails and stuff. I'm like, bro, we're not, you know, skin I had is no idea thing, coming into school that we even had to do that. Like, I was yeah, just so right. excited. I was like, oh, wait, what? What? I got to pass all these quizzes now? Yeah. And that well, was the most was school. We had to pass all the quizzes. At that the was end. the most challenging thing. I'm going to tell you a funny story, man. We was in barber really? school. A friend of mine, right? I think it was the, some, one of the kids that, that we became cool with on the right when we joined um I say we because me and Zena joined together. Oh, okay, um, cool. Right when we when we became cool with some of the uh classmates or whatever, one of my guys somehow he was able to get his hands on all the tests from the whole chapter, the whole <laughs> school. And of course, after that, me and Zeno never studied not one chapter, bro. Yeah. So we passed the whole school like that. And then obviously we got to challenge the state board after. Yeah. So how you go to challenge the state board if you don't know any of the book? And we pretty much cheated the whole school. So I was like, 
<laughs> it was bad. So then it's like, okay, now shit just got real. Now I got to actually study this shit. So I had to see it and put my face in the book and study one by one on my own. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it was yeah. not the smartest thing. That's kind of what we did. Like I was staying on pace at one point, you know, I got to like chapter six and then I'm like, ah, fuck, I'm just going to do them at the end. Yeah. <laughs> no one so it's said the, they did it like it's that. The, it's the worst thing you could do, man. Yeah. The worst then thing. you got to cram for the actual real yeah. test. When people tell end. you try, try to stop cutting corners, that's it right there. That's the perfect yeah. example. That was up 100%. me and a few kids were like, no, nah, I got all the answer. I don't got to study. I just need to learn how to cut. Yeah. No, nah, it don't work that way. <laughs> if you're cutting that corner, don't cut the the <laughs> haircut <laughs> corners, right? Right. right. <laughs> like, make sure you're paying attention at least for the hands-on stuff. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that can happen. So all right, Dre, let, let's get let's get into your background a little bit. Let everyone know where you were born, number one, and then we'll kind of go from mm -hmm. there. Okay, so I was born in a country in South America called Paraguay. A lot of people yeah. don't know it's a very small country. Um, when I was 12 years old, 12, turning 13, I think it was, my family decided to move to the U.S. We came to the state. And, yeah, so I, when we came to the state, we lived in a, deer, in, in a, in a city called Deerfield. I'll have mentioned oh, you moved there. straight to Deerfield from yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you kind of got to lay it down. Yeah. When you were thirteen, at the oldest, right? Mm -hmm. And then U.S. became home to me, pretty much, you know. So nice. So I you were in middle school then, right? You went straight to middle I, school. I was, I was in sixth grade, correct? Yeah. Sixth grade. Middle school, yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit. Being the new kid from from out of the country, trying it to fit not, in, it it's not, not easy, good. right? It was not good. It was probably one of the roughest years of my life, I would say, just trying Ooh. to learn a new language, try, trying to adapt to a new country, trying to meet new people. They didn't speak the same language you did, you know? So it's, I didn't, I didn't went to the most um, chill middle school, let's just say. It was a little rough, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I went through certain situations that I was like, oh, I, I used to go home and tell my parents, man, take me down. Fuck out of here, man. Take right. me back home. Like, dude, it's hard it's enough good. moving yeah. to a new school, like, especially a school that's a little rough. And then you yeah. got the language barrier. <laughs> and then you got, yeah, I mean, just getting settled in at your house. It's a lot of shit going on for a 13 year old kid <laughs> trying yeah. to trying to just but get educated, was, let alone anything else. Right. But some of my closest friends today is from that era, from that school, that particular yeah. time, those kids, you know what I mean? I'm actually just baptized one of my friends' uh, daughter that was my first friend in middle school that I met. Wow. So, yeah, you'll, you'll remember those first people that yeah, made it man. nicer. Especially because everybody, like, I don't know how it is in Georgia, but in Florida, we have a system called ESOL. So when you come to the state, and if you're not fluent in English, they throw you in these special classes. So gotcha. on that, those classes are called ESO. So everybody in that classroom is most likely is fresh in the U.S. So they don't know anybody. So you probably bond with those people. Okay. That, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, yeah, at least you got there. someone to relate to a little yeah, bit. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but once you, you know, change classes or go to lunch, now you know, you and know, <laughs> in the jungle, yeah, whatever. A whole different <laughs> environment. <laughs> yeah, it's the jungle for sure. Yeah. But well, once you were able to kind of get stabilized, um mm -hmm. what were you kind of into what were your hobbies that you kind of started um i was always into soccer growing up yeah. i used to play in um organized soccer when i was back home when i came to the state i started playing for the school um it was it was one of the most beautiful memories i got from the middle school was playing for the school actually and then I uh, started playing travel soccer when I was in nice. middle school and then all the way to high school. I was always like into sport. You know what I mean? Yeah. That can help overcome being the new kid fast, right? Yeah. That can help yeah. expedite yeah, it a little know, bit. You bond a lot with the people, your, your teammates, you know what I mean? So. Right. Did you have any of those East Soul kids in the nine, soccer nine, team? 90% of the team. 90% of the team. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Because, excuse me. So, like I said, where I'm from, 
the majority of the the population in my school were African Americans. Okay. Soccer at that time, this is uh, 98, 99, 2000, around that time. Soccer in the U.S. was not as popular as it is today. You know what I mean? Yeah. So everybody was pretty much playing football or, or basketball. So it was very rare for you to see. Um, there was not even soccer field. There was not enough soccer fields in South Florida like it is today. Yeah. I'm not saying there weren't, but it wasn't like. Like right now in one city, you might have multiple choices to, to go to play, you know what I mean? Yeah. Back it's a little then, more like segregated, that. it seems, yeah, right yeah. Now, especially with the sports. Mm -hmm. How old are you now, Dre? I'm turning 38 in about a month. Turn yeah. 38. I always like the ring, the 38. Yeah, man. But, <laughs> but uh, time flies. So time flies, it does bro. Fly. I feel like it was yesterday. I was a younger. <laughs> so you're into sports. Mm -hmm. I mean, did you kind of like, um get exposed to barbering early then or were what not was, at all not what, at all what was your barber exposure was, barber was not barber was not even in the picture till i was cosmetology nothing nothing bro nothing to me it was just one of those um my dream was always playing soccer i yeah. grew up seeing my dad play my dad had the opportunity to make it pro at one time and it didn't go the, the way he wanted to you know but even as an as a as a as a young kid, my, I was probably from that I remember. I don't know from five to ten. My dad was still actively playing in organized soccer, so really I was cool always around that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when I came here, um, that was what I was pursuing, trying to you know do. So where I'm from is not like in the U.S. In the U.S., you got to go to college first to then make it to pro level, correct? Almost Sometimes, every sport, yeah. well, the majority. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where I'm from, bro, some of the most known athletes in the world did not know how to read. You see what I'm yeah. saying? They never went to third grade type shit. So it's kind of like you grow up with that mentality where I don't need school. I'm going to be an athlete, you know? It's very ignorant if you ask me, but like back then, it was kind of like how I thought. Um, yeah. On top of that, um, I had an issue with um, my, immigra <coughs> my immigration status. Yeah, that I I didn't know how long would it take for me to become legal in the U.S. or if I was even gonna be able to stay in the U.S. You know what I mean? Right. So it was one of those things that college was not not that I didn't think about going, but it was not a reality. You know what I mean? Was so it, yeah, wasn't the priority for sure? You mm -hmm. didn't know what was what so, tomorrow was gonna bring, kind of. Exactly. So so I mean, what when did you get past that when you knew you were kind of cemented? So um, when I was, I think I was 20 years old, if I'm not mistaken. That's when I finally was able to get my legal document. I was able to apply to school if I wanted to or go get a regular job. Until then, I was, bro, driving with no license, working with fake documents, you know, stuff like that. It was it was amazing. Yeah. Then on top of that, I had a, my son at the time was, was a baby, not even a year old yet, if I'm not mistaken. And so you were 20 and you had a newborn yeah, my, son was, or so? my son was born when I was 20. Yeah. Okay. So I think I joined barber school when I was 21. I think my document had just came and I was thinking about joining the military. It was yeah. one of those. I always, I've always been fascinated with the military um, world, let's say. Yeah. But, um, um, it was kind of like a fast option for me to just join the military and do something with my life fast. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. school was not in a, it was not a thought for me at that moment. You know what I mean? So and when did then, you give up? When did you know that the kind of the soccer dream was over? As you get old, as you get older, I realize how it is in the U S if you don't go to school, you're not going to make it to the pro level, the next level that you want to be. And then, um, I need to start working. I need to start providing for my family. You know what I mean? So it's kind of yeah. like one of those things that you just got to be real to yourself and put th certain things to the side. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now I'm how, older, how did you I, kind of balance like, you know, something that you enjoy or love and getting fulfilled compared to like, I just gotta, I just gotta get to work and make money now. Cause I got this kid coming. Was that um, what was kind of, 
some thought there. Were you trying um, to maybe meet in the middle a little so, bit? So he's, but it was so he's, more he's, about he's, money. It's weird, man, because in the process of me just being in the process of just be playing organized sports to then um becoming an adult I, i'm 18 years old now you know i started messing around with music me and Zeno was actually messing around with music at the time okay and all these like it happened too fast for me you know what i mean from yeah. playing playing sports to do a, a little performance here and there then my my girl at the time getting pregnant shit just got real you know what i mean so i'm like okay yeah. so none of this stuff is paying off i need to start really focus on getting money you know what i mean yeah. So that's when I kind of like put everything to the side. So, you know what, let me try to do something better with my life. Then thank, thanks to God, my documentary came. I was able to get better jobs or whatever. My son was, I think, one year old. If I'm not mistaken. And I started thinking different now, you know, because when you're young and you don't have anybody looking up to you, you kind of like just, your own, you know, you just, you just living. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you just live in the moment. Yeah. Now, when you have a dependent, it's different because they look up to you. So whatever you do right or wrong, they're going to, you know, most likely follow your footsteps, right? For sure. So wait, wait a minute. Back to the music okay. <laughs> part. I mean, that's hard to walk away from, especially if you have any kind of mm -hmm. inkling of success or any kind of reach. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What What was kind of your... Were you in kind of the reggaeton? Correct. Yeah, in the, more in the Spanish world. Yeah, because okay. obviously English was not my first language. But were so. you part of this RZA deal that nah, nah, <laughs> Zeno nah, nah, brought nah. So, up at one point? No, nah, so me and Zeno, it's funny because me and Zeno were actually, uh, uh, we were a group together, me and him. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, Yeah. Okay. so me and him were a group. And then eventually down the line, um, there was another kid that was a friend of ours that also did music around us, but he's music. He was doing music in English, more like hip hop. Mm -hmm. They collab one time. They had a a, 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 a dope single together, mm -hmm. and somebody heard it and wanted to manage them together. Yeah. So we spoke. They became a group. Me and Zeno kind of split, and from that from that group that's is when mean. that's when on he made on um, the Wu Latino, I think it was called. And um, whatever, from his career that went that way. And then I just stick to what I was doing, trying to, you know, make it, but nothing took off for me on that end. So. Okay. That makes sense. We Perfect. actually had a student together at the house. It was pretty cool. Man. <laughs> I bet, yeah, man. Fun. Yeah. Especially around that age. I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, yeah. you're just figuring it out. and just we, You pretty much leave worry free around that time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, There's not a lot of responsibilities. And when you start adding the biggest responsibility, arguably, mm -hmm. right, then it's like, exactly. okay, now, now we got to start thinking a little different. Okay, so so getting into you got your document before you start barber school, Correct. right? So then, then um, I started thinking about joining the military. Okay, and so what kind time, of steered you? What what helped you make that decision? Which way you to were join the go? to join the military? No, I or mean to not go. Yeah, either barber school or military school. Okay, or, so or, with or the military, military, to me, was something more more secure. Yeah. I had a, a few of my boys that were actually just coming home from deployment. I mean, not from deployment, from just on serving. Wait, how and, close is this from 9-11? Is this right around that time? No, 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 no. 9-11 happened when I was in high school. 9-11, okay. I, I was in 10th grade, I think. Got you. Yeah, I didn't not even too know far before. removed, but close. Yes and no. It sounds like it's close, but back then it was like, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm like, saying? Like that was five was years ago. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, at the time I was working doing construction, and okay. I remember I had a big project in in Tampa. It's like Tampa from where I'm from is like three and a half hours forward, maybe. Okay. And I remember being away from my kid for the for the first time at uh, I don't know, maybe. A month and a half maybe without seeing my family something like that very difficult yeah it was hard it was very very hard i'm not gonna lie to you <clears throat> and I, at the time i remember I, I, I was at the hotel after work every day i was studying for the asvab the asvab is the, the test that you take for the military in case you right. know so i was studying to take the test and i started feeling like homesick like i started missing my kid and my girl at a time you were just like 
maybe this is not it for me, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you know you're gonna spend a lot more time. Exactly, and then <laughs> and you know, you got deployments. You got it's a lot tougher. You know what I mean? I'm sure like that's not even close to how hard that the military got to be. You know what I mean? Sure. So I decided to not go. I came back. And I changed my mind. I remember the, the recruiters calling my phone, like, come on, man, you got to come sign up for the test, these, these, and that. And I'm just like, man, forget that. You know, I'm on. And um, whatever, I went and got my GED. I started thinking, like, okay, my son's going to look up to me. I didn't want my son to look at me like, daddy, you didn't do shit. How you going to tell me to go to school? You, didn't <laughs> go. you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't want that. Like, I started getting that type, of, that type of thoughts, you know what I mean? I was I like that with my dad. Yeah. My dad, my dad dropped out of college, and he wanted me to go to college. I'm like, yeah, but it's crazy <laughs> because sometimes we like we think they don't know, but they do know what's best for us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. My dad would tell me shit that I'm like, man, what up, bro? Like, you don't know. Yeah. This is different. And then you get older, and we're like, this guy knew the whole time, you know. So now it's like me and my son, same right. thing. I be telling him shit, and then. He comes up to me like all my dad right wants there. is what you know what he didn't have you know exactly what, of course that, i feel like yeah, my my true. parents are i can't blame my parents for nothing i did because i feel like they did the hardest decision ever which was picking me my brother my sister and bringing us to the u.s to get a better life you know what i mean so to me that alone is like it's huge bro like what are they about, doing now how are your parents now everybody good <clears throat> thank god my mom still works my dad also works Everybody's good, man. I have that's good. No complaint. Yeah, that's good. Good for them. Thanks, man. So yeah, going back to that, um, I got my GED, and I remember my cousin. His name is Jo. My cousin had called me one day, and just you know, just regular conversation here and there was a uh, nighttime. He had told me, "Yo, would not you come to barber school with me?" Because I told him I didn't know what I was going to do. Not going to the military no more. Should I go to school? Or, you know, I was a little confused let's say but mm-hmm. then my cousin i come and say dre why don't you come go to barber school with me bro these these and that and uh i remember i reached out to zeno and and zeno was like i'll go with you you know let's just go see what they got to say so i said fuck it let's go we went to school on a saturday morning i will never forget this it was saturday morning we went to just to talk to the the people at the desk or the financial or, um mm-hmm. office or whatever we ended up signing up that was on a Saturday. We went just to see what they had to say, what they offered. Like, we had no idea what it was, you know, what it was going to be like. Yeah. And we ended up signing up. And Tuesday, or the, the following week, was our first day of school, like, officially. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was like, what the fuck? Like, we're in school. I remember coming home and telling my my uh, my family, yo, I'm schooling too. Like, what? Everybody looked at me like, like crazy, you know, like in Harvard school. Yeah, no one gets it, man. Yeah, and the but rest was, is history. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was cool, man. It was, and that that's kind of like I would probably say that's when I started to fall in love with the business. You know what I mean? Because yeah, I never ever thought about being a barber. Never. It was not even in the picture. You know what I mean? Absolutely, man. And just going there, I think it was one of those like I don't want to say loss, but like not being sure of what to do next and yeah. barbering just fell in my lap i kind of like they gave me financial aid so i say you know let me give it a try and see you know yeah. what i'm saying once you, know, you start to get good it's like holy and shit that, and, and and that's the thing though i was i feel like it was so easy for me man like yeah. i never struggled in cutting hair i never like it was from the first time that i picked up the clippers i felt like i was very comfortable already i was actually working in a shop if I'm not mistaken, four months, four or five months into school, I was already in the shop cutting hair. Yeah. So, like, it was, it, to me, it was very, very fast. Like, to the point that I was starting getting a little money at the shop, I didn't want to finish school anymore. So yeah. that slowed me down, you feel me? Like, you probably had a good eye, right? Like, you could see it. Oh, it became very natural to me, you know? Like, I yeah. didn't struggle at all. I never had a situation where, like, this is what, what you're learning you know, on barber school or fresh in the shop. I never had a situation where somebody sat in my chair and said, oh, my God, you fucked up my hair. Like, what am I going to Like, never had that. Right. You know what I'm saying? I always had. Never happened? You never had a never, bad, like. Ever, ever in my you, life. No. Where you, at least you were like, ah, man, I don't know. But they didn't know? You know what I mean? Yeah, me, I was always my worst. Uh, 
That's how you can tell. Like, like my worst own criticism, you know what I'm saying? Like, I yeah. used to look at my work, I'm like, what the fuck? And I look around at people around me, what they were doing, I'm like, I'm competing with these guys. I don't think I'm going right. to rise here, man, you know? Yeah. But it wasn't a, uh, I was not giving out haircuts to the point that I'm like, yo, you need a hat. <laughs> it wasn't one of those, man, you know what I mean? We're talking about this but, guy, right? During yeah. This time. What, what time period was this? Nah, that was already down. I was already one of the strongest barbers in the shop around that time. Yeah. That's, that was already maybe years, I don't know, maybe year nine or year 10 for me on that shot, on that picture. Oh, maybe. shit, really? Yeah. Or I maybe not so much. in the back, too. So, I mean, so, he, he's been so riding a fun, with you for so a minute. I'm, so, I'm going to give you a funny story with Zeno. Yeah. So, um, so I, I was working for a shop. Zeno was working for that particular shop that you see on the picture. Mm-hmm. Then eventually, I was I was working in the hood, yeah. and eventually you start to understand that the money is not in the hood. You want to go to the more, you know, wealthy area, correct? Of course. So I ended up going to Boca to a shop in Boca. It was actually inside FAU campus, the college. Yeah. The university. Florida Atlantic. Yeah. Florida Atlantic, correct. So I started working there. Zena was working for the same owner in a different location. And Zeno ended up buying that shop with the agreement that I was allowed to come work for him because my man Angel was the, the owner at the time. Angel did not want to let me leave that location because I was one of the main barbers at that location. So he knew he didn't want to take me out of that, you know what I mean? Yeah. But eventually we came to an agreement, Zeno bought the shop and I, that I went and worked with him. So that picture right there, Zeno was already the owner. Got you. <clears throat> I mean, this had to be what? Oh, it says 2018. Yeah, yeah but right? that it says 2018, but that pose is a, is a throwback picture. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? that picture, that, that that particular um, picture, I was already a, a stylist. I wasn't a barber anymore. Oh I yeah, it's through... Throwback Thursday. I've been doing yeah. that. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I was already in the game for a while. When you seen that? Okay. Um, so let's let's go through your progression a little bit. So I was you, doing showcases. Um, yeah, I was gonna I say, did, mind you, like after I left the shop, I kind of like disconnect myself from the barber uh, world a little bit. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, kind of like focus more on the stylist. It was something yeah. new to me. So back then there was a show in New York called the Scissor Salute Show. I don't know if okay. it's still around. I went there. I did showcase with them. If, you know, it's kind of like a live cutting video. And then after you do like an interview on the radio, it was pretty cool. Huh. I was doing that. And um, almost every sh- hair show around around the East Coast, I was trying to go. I went to Connecticut, um, Atlanta went once. I had a passion for the industry. You know what I mean? I was trying to network as much, most of the barbers that, I, that was popping around that time. You know? So you're doing, you're doing hair shows. I mean, I'm sure you're getting exposure that way. Did you land any kind of like? So this is still in barbering when you're doing Correct. all these shows. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. So still in barbering. I mean, back then they weren't really handing out these like clipper deals and ambassadorships and things so like they, that. So they were already. They were doing okay. that already, but it was only a few. Like right. So you had to really see. be in to get. Those yeah, events. you had to be like, and it was. It was mainly like people that won um, battles and stuff like that. Yeah. The, the, those people were the ones. Did like, you do any of those? Like, nah, nah. I was never into like battling. It was just, I don't like cutting under pressure. Does that make sense? Like as far as like I'm competing right. with you. I'm trying to like, I don't look at it right, that yeah, way. Man. I feel like I could learn from you if you just graduated from barber school. I can learn from you today. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's kind of like I never. One of the things that I hate about the barber industry is that everybody's very defensive everybody's very um how can i say this like easily offended like instead of like me pushing you and you pushing me even though we're from a a different city or different shop we don't gotta look at each other like we're beefing you know what i'm saying like but it kind of looked like 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 competition yeah now yeah, they, cool they all look that. at it like they always like, ah oh, man, I could do better than him instead mm-hmm. of like, oh, I, I like what he did there. Maybe mm-hmm. I can add that. Like mm-hmm. it's so and like doggy dog sometimes. Yeah, and, and you see when you when you start going to these shows, you start seeing little clicks here and there, and you start seeing who like 
um, they favoritism this guy or you know stuff like mm -hmm. that, and you start okay. the politics behind it. Just you know, what I'm saying like I wasn't fan of it. I wonder if it's still like that, with at least no at the at that level of the expos know. and everything. I did I did notice that this is way after I left the, the shop that the mm -hmm. barbers and the stylists is kind of like joining more than yeah they, I, they're I, collabing I, more like it's more normal to I'm see a barber up. it's more normal to yeah. see a, a barber inside a salon than back then you know what i mean yeah so it's kind of like i got a little taste in it i worked in a salon for three months or three years and uh yeah i mean i i won't say i was like you know, super willing to learn, you know, mm -hmm. cosmetologist stuff, but just, just by proxy being in, being in the same space, like I happen yeah, to yeah. learn some things or at least yeah, learn yeah. Te terminology or just like the exposure to little things like that. Like, yeah. uh, I see like now you do a lot of extensions and, and things Correct. like that. I don't think I, I would have even been able to recognize that. <laughs> <laughs> if I got you, I got you. In a yeah, salon yeah. environment, you know what I mean? Bro, the first but day that I walked into the salon, it's like, it's like you learning how to walk again. Like, yeah. everything is different, you know what I mean? So let's talk about that. What what was like your life <laughs> and your, what was kind so, of the pivot? Okay, so What was the crossroads? Let, let, so <laughs> let me tell you how it started. So when I was in barber school, when I first joined barbershop, a friend of mine had just graduated cosmetology school yeah. my boy rod my boy rod ended up becoming my client you know what i'm saying so he will you know work at the salon he will come to me and he will always be in my ear about yo leave these you over here cutting like nonstop from nine to nine at night time these and that you tired but you don't make money yeah now maddie listen Zinnikin vibes for me i was a very very successful barber like i was nonstop. i can tell me. Like I was very successful, okay? And I feel like I was doing good money. You know what I'm saying? Like if I'm cutting nonstop six days a week, I'm making decent money, right? You agree with me? For sure, yeah. Um, he was telling me, yo, come to this to the salon, this, these and that. And um, I was like, nah, it's not for me. And five years later, maybe from him being in my ears, he got he he got his wife at the time pregnant and they they did a baby shower for her. So I ended up going to the baby shower and that day I met his boss, the people that worked at the salon with him and, you know, everybody around him. So that day, um, I met this guy named Carlos De Carlos and he, Carlos was the one that told me, Dre, why don't you come talk to me on Tuesday when I get to the salon, come see me, let's sit down, let's have a conversation. Mm -hmm. In my head, I'm like, I didn't want to be disrespectful. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go. But in my head, I'm like, Fuck, am I gonna go here for you? Like I'm not, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to be disrespectful towards my boy Ra. So I said, right. you know what? Let me go. Just show love. Just out of respect, yeah. Exactly. So I went, and uh, whatever he showed me the salon, explained to me what he wanted. He I was young at the time. I feel like I'm still young, first of all. But, <laughs> but um, <laughs> he. How old were explain. you then? You think? Um, twenty nine, maybe. Okay. 29, 28, then. If I'm not okay. mistaken, I could be off an age. I don't know, but it was around that time. Still young enough to yeah, yeah, yeah. make a big like, turn if you want to. For real, yeah. for real. So then the big thing for me was one, once he opens the book and he showed me how much money they were making. Right. You're like, what? Right. They're paying 400 for what? Bro, <laughs> when I tell you, listen, like I said, going back... <laughs> I'm a very successful barber. I'm getting good money for a barber, right? Right. I'm making more money than some of my clients that are master degrees in hand. Yeah. You follow me? Of course, yeah. Once I see what they were doing as a stylist, I said, that's all I need to see. Game over. I'm, I'm, I'm coming here. The same day, I go back to the shop. Zeno is the owner of the shop at the time. So I went yeah. up to Zeno. I said, yo, listen, Zeno. Mind you, me and him, we, we is way before yeah. barbering. Yeah. So I said, bro, this and this, I'm gonna go give it a try. He was actually very happy for me. Like he was like, he almost sounded like he wanted to come with me too. You know what I'm saying? Like he like, yeah. bro, like 
for some for some reason, Zena was always into women, and he had that passion towards her. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just went for the money. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I was like, yo, I'm going for the money. Forget I was gonna ask that at one point. Yeah, <laughs> I, was I like, just went for the money. How much of it was the money? How much of it was just like the the love of the, the crap? Put, put it like women. They were making <laughs> what I was making a week. This guy was doubling that a day, a oh, day, man. Maddie. So it was like. <laughs> Me seeing this, I was like, what am I doing in the shop, man? I'm wasting my time over here, you know? Of course, I go back to the shop, the rest of my boys, oh, the, you come. That's a difficult man. thing, too, because you're very good at barbering. Yeah. You have but to you know what it was, man? Gonna... I was, I What's think up? what helped, I was also losing passion for uh, the barber game. I felt like I was getting bored with it. Back, yeah, man. I felt like I was getting bored with it. I felt like I needed something else. I needed something. I actually deleted my Instagram at the yeah. time. I went yeah. into to the uh, to the salon. I didn't have no Instagram for maybe two years, maybe. Like, yeah. I really got fed up with all this barber game and showcase and <clears> taking <throat> your sweet time to just to take a picture to post and get likes and all this. Yeah. It was nonsense to me. Like, it's I just normal, bro. It's normal to feel like that. I mean, just for the people watching at home, like Jordan had to fucking come up with reasons to fucking keep going. Like he, he created yeah. these battles in his head. Like he yeah. said, he said, I sucked that one time or he said this one thing. I'm going to use that. He had to use everything he could. So mm -hmm. it's things you have to come up with to not burn out. You know what I mean? You right. got to keep that fire burning. You got to find new logs to put on it. Correct. The cosmetology so that, was that. That's weird. one of the things that I used to get from going so much of those shows. You know, like you get inspiration from yeah. everybody. You go, oh, shit, I remember you, blah, you know, showcases now. Yeah, man. And stuff I like still that, haven't you know, like, been to one, man. I'm going to go. I'm five years should, into bro. barbering. Nah, you I'm going to go. It, it, when I go, when I have my own thing, I'm still working in a shop in Midtown Atlanta right now. And, okay. uh, if I ever go, <clears throat> I'm if I when I when I do my own thing, it's gonna be the sweet route. Okay. And uh then I'm gonna be very a lot more intrigued. I'm intrigued now just through the podcast and through yeah, barbering yeah. alone. This is but pretty cool. I'm man. gonna be a lot more cool. a lot more active in that realm for sure. Yeah. I definitely could say that, that every time I went to a show, I will come back inspired. Yeah. That I would it was like one of my favorite things. I would come back wanting to cut hair. You see what I'm saying? Like I would come yeah. back. I want to try these. I seen they did these. Or uh, uh, at the time, I think Babyliss was just starting to get their big barber because they always had a stage on the shows, yeah. but not a barber <laughs> show, a uh, barber stage. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, it's starting to become a, one of those like barber is growing now. It's getting bigger yeah. now. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, Babylon started, just started yeah. like five years. I, I remember I was in school and my mm -hmm. barber instructor <clears throat> in Phoenix was talking, was like kind of shit talking Babylon. was like, I know it looks shiny. Was, I know it looks cool. Me. That was me, Maddie. I'm not <laughs> yeah. even going to lie to you. No, but until I mean, today, listen, until today, I just a week and a half ago, somebody <laughs> gave me a free edges the baby list that is is ray is not gold it's ray i don't yeah. know the model i don't want to be crazy right. <laughs> but it's kind of like the the top of the the, the clip is kind of like a skeleton yeah now i'm from the era where people were cutting the gray t outliners to make it look the same yeah they're taking a the saw from the shit <laughs> that's my era you feel me yeah so now i just got my first edges that comes like that so i was like yeah i went to adjust the blade and i noticed <laughs> the blades don't need to come off the clippers I'm still from that back in the day. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I'm from man. that era. You feel me? Yeah. No. I'm. I, I got a little <laughs> taste of that. I. Uh, yeah. So it was. I, it was I still. Cool. I was talking about that the other day, though. That's funny. I'm like, I wonder who was the first fucking guy to do that to take the saw out <laughs> of the fucking clipper, and I guarantee he got no credit for it. Didn't get a single fucking ounce know. of credit for it. I bet. I remember talking hella shit about that. I'll tell you that one. What them but, them cutting their shit? Yeah, I was like, why? Man, this barber is like, 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 better. This, this is this is my mentality. Why are these people doing all this nonsense just to get a few likes? And you know that was. But I feel like the younger the, you are, 
the more ignorant you are. You know what I'm saying? For sure, so for sure. You that was you don't you don't hear the noise as much. You know what no, I mean? When you're young. Now, now I feel like I'm a little more um how can I open mind about stuff, you know, like I could be yeah. like, okay. Let me let me give it a try and see it's why funny. you're doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you're young, you don't hear the noise because you're ignorant to it. When you're older, you still hear the noise, but you find out skills to silence it. Right. <laughs> right? No, nah, it's true. Correct. That's, I agree. that's how it is. So okay, so you get this newfound love. You see you see the you see the books. Yeah, so I go back to the shop. I tell you, you know, I'm leaving. <clears throat> he was on the owner of the shop at the time. All my barbers boys are talking hella shit. Oh, yeah, the they're closet. breaking your balls. Man. I always knew it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> shit like that. I'm like, come on, man. So I'm like, me, see, if, if you know me, like, if you work next to me, you know I'm one of the biggest ones to pick on you for whatever reason. Like, I make sure you know I'm there in the room, you know what I mean? Like, right. So they couldn't so, wait. <laughs> yeah, so they did not hesitate to let me hear it, bro. Like, they were called, <laughs> at the time, this is funny, oh, man, because at the time, I was known, my Instagram was Dre Blades, just like you, Maddie Blades. Oh, I was Dre shit. Blades. Bro, they started calling me Dre Braids, bro. <laughs> there we go, Dre Braids. Yeah. Dre Braids, bro, it was the fun. The clients were making fun of me. It was it was funny, bro, but it was Damn. a beautiful, it was a beautiful mo- uh, transition, bro. When I left, like, um, I remember taking that last picture with, my whole crew, you know, behind me, whatever, like it was, and I walked out, like I was, I felt empty. Driving home, I was like, I feel like I broke up with my girl type shit, you know what I mean? Like, Dude, and, you, you were talking about going into the military. This this makes me feel like you, it's like you're going to the military. <laughs> that was the last, like, yeah. <laughs> gathering. So, now you're in this new frontier. So I went to the salon, <laughs> and the rest is history, man. I learned everything I... So, you, so you being so school. good at barbering, though, like, mm-hmm. walk me through, like, what it was like being bad at something or, like, kind of learning again. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm sure you dabbled. I'm sure you tried to mess around a little oh. bit in the shop. But, um, like, what was that salon, like? Kind on of the like, salon you're talking about? On the salon? Yeah. Uh, don't tell me you weren't bad there ever. So, <laughs> so hold on. Let me, let me, so... It's not even it's not even about being bad in a salon. So the mentality is this. If mm. I'm learning how to cut hair, you sit on my chair and I mess up your whole haircut. It grows back in a week. Yeah. With the woman, it doesn't work that way. No. You know what I'm saying? So I might push your edge back. You might come back to him and be like, come on. You know what I'm saying? You, you cool with me. You're going to give me a second chance. Yeah. That doesn't exist in a woman too. You cut the hair wrong, you burn their hair, you fry their hair, whatever you do wrong is done. It's yeah. a done deal. You lost that client. She could be with you for 10 years. You lost that client <clears throat> that day. You feel me? Damn, so, that's real. Yeah. Yeah. So um I've seen it. Not not <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You worked in the salon. Yeah. yeah. So you can relate. You oh uh, witnessed it. <laughs> it's not just the service anymore. Now it's the way you talk to them. They mm. mind you, I'm I'm a straight dude coming from the barbershop. I'm rough. Now, the way I talk is different. Everything is different. The way I dress is different. You know what I mean? Yeah. So having to learn how to communicate with clients, not just a regular, these are, these are women. So now that became a big challenge for me. I yeah. used to get nervous. I didn't even want to look at their face, bro. I used to have to talk to them looking at their head. And I didn't want to look at the mirror, look at the face. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, was, it was challenging. But So to me, that was the, the, the most challenging um situations to me it was learning how to i must say control the client even though you're not really controlling them but learning how to control them meaning like if they tell you oh, i don't know i don't want to i don't want to trim my hair no you get in a trim you need to get a trim like you yeah. see, this is not an option i'm not giving you up you get in the trim you see what yeah. i'm saying you That's learn the to consultation like, got a little yeah. more advanced and for you i like learned that. that from my guy <clears throat> carlos de carlos he Bro, it was insane. They they used to come to the salon to spend seventy dollars on a on a consultation on a, a root touch up. Let's just say just oh, to follow the grades, okay. something simple. Yeah, they would leave the salon spending 700 1500 just because 
he had that in him. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, like I got I a little pace to that, too. The upsailing. I used to, I used to look Oh, you need a like, keratin treatment. Correct. So <laughs> yeah, I didn't have that in me. Like, I was... I don't consider myself a salesman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I feel like, nah, if they don't say nothing, I'm not gonna, you know, like, I was scared to talk to them, bro. Yeah. So that, to me, was the most challenging situation. That industry, in especially with, like, product and things like yeah. that, they really push that hard, don't they? Yeah. In my second year, you know, in the salon, uh, I was already teaching classes. I was already in, in, in on stage at hair shows teaching how to do uh, women hair. Wow. I feel like that transition was very smooth. Um, I felt like I had the right people around me at, at the time. They were doing it already. So I kind of like just hop on the bandwagon and kept going with them. You know what I mean? Okay. So it was kind of easy for me to to get on stage with them. So after working for this guy, Carlos De Carlos, I was only doing keratins and extensions with him. Okay. And I wanted to learn how to do color. And I linked up with this guy named Bo. To today, he he's one of my closest friends, especially in the stylist work. To today, anything I know, everything I know as far as color. I learned from this guy named Bo, Bo Regar. And uh, he's actually the, the, the head educator for a brand called Alpha Parf. Okay. So people pay $500 to $700 to see this guy teach color. I was learning for free, working for him. So I had the right. privilege that I had that, you know. So I learned everything I know as far as, as color, I, I learned from him. Even to today, sometimes I have my doubt. Because color is very tricky. It's not that simple, you know. It's not just throw yellow no. and it's yellow. It doesn't work that way, you know. I learned that so, too. So someone's like, "I want blue hair." It's like you got yeah, like dark yeah, ass yeah. hair. This isn't you got to you got to bleach it out. And then, yeah, you know, apply the blue, whatever. See, I didn't but know. So today, that. I call I call Bo if I have a question. I still call him. And I, yo, Bo, I'm having these, 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 and he he got me through the whole process. You know that's I mean? beautiful, man. I mean, shit. Yeah. And it I, I actually like got to do shows with him. I yeah. became, I, I went to two different shows with him. I didn't, I was not on stage teaching how to do color, but I was behind the stage prepping the models, doing the colors. And he, all he had to do was a presentation, you know what I mean? So it was pretty okay. cool. That's, it's cool how you're, <clears throat> during your transition, you kind of had things there for you that like, mm -hmm. Made it a little easier, and you were yeah, kind of blessed facts. in a lot of ways. And facts, uh, yeah. but I mean, I didn't come without your hard work, you know, accompanying mm -hmm. it. So that I mean, it's kind of the stars align there, right? Mm -hmm. Um, what's your favorite setting to do hair in? Setting like, meaning like so tools like, wise. Or did you mean? like no, like in the barber shop, in the salon, at the sh on stage, house call. Like what's kind I of hate, I hate house calls. That's like, <laughs> so yeah, because I mean, bro, you got to wash hair calls. if you're doing hair or if you're doing color, mm -hmm. and it's like kind of um, more difficult. I would right? say I would say my favorite is always gonna be wherever I'm at every day. Yeah, I feel like you sure. get comfortable. You learn the lining where you at. You learn everything is comfortable. You know what I mean? You know where it's at. Yeah, everything is right there. Versus I'm a, I'm a go, nut so when it comes to that shit, dude. Yeah. So it's whenever like people, you go to, yeah. Go so whenever they take you to like I don't know house calls or 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 um, um showcase whatever, nothing is set up the way you would. So no. you need you you got to learn how to improvise. You yeah. Know what I mean? And sometimes improvising could be a little uncomfortable, and yeah. you might not perform the way you're supposed to, and you might be your number one. Um, you know, judge on your own where you'd be like, oh, this yeah. guy could have done better. And then you go home and you can't sleep thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, man. So those, because we care, we love it, man. It's, yeah. it's, we so we, to we, me would we be are always, really weird about that. So, to me, it would be wherever I'm working at, that's where I prefer. Do you have any uh, stories where that, you know, something like that was super difficult and you kind of persevered or even, you know, it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to because of 
the setting or, or the environment. No, not really. No crazy no. like. I could see you I cutting have, some I like. Got, I could see you cutting some like Instagram model that's like getting ready, and you got to be backstage or like. Did you ever do like no, a never, fashion show they, or anything they, like that? And I, I did, a, but I never had any situation where I feel like fuck. I wish I was back at my station. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I know that, but I, I'm but I'm also very very um careful with what I take as far as work. You know what I mean? Like if you telling me, yeah. Dre, I'm gonna hire you to do I don't know, yeah, Maxine magazine model, whatever. I hope one day you call him for You're that. Right. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> uh, I'm gonna make sure that whatever I I do is gonna be something that I know I'm gonna be able to nail. It, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not so, something. So you want like, the maximum? Oh, you want the maximum shoot? You're like, yes, but. Yeah, we gotta make sure things are right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, for instance, no matter what, I would never do color outside the salon. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? You worked in a salon before, you know how color is. It could go south very fast. So, yeah, that's what I was I mean? wondering if you were able, ever able to do color outside. Like, never. That. I never do that. I don't that even take sense. chances, man. Gotcha. Unless it's one of those all black. Something very easy and simple. Yeah. Maybe, you know. Yeah. But if you want blonding or highlights and the, nah, fuck all that. It's yeah. a lot more. It, it goes there's a lot that goes behind that, you know what I mean? Hundred percent, dude. Okay. So have you ever converted any barbers to to uh so, stylists or cosmetology? So I never converted nobody. Every single Barber that worked next to me reached out to me at one point asking me he wants to get into a woman here. Every single barber. Balls. Every single barber that worked next to me. Yeah, I can see Zeno has got a lot of I lot really of thought Zeno was part. gonna get into woman hair. He still like, mixes full, it up. Full route. Like, Besides Zeno, I, I would probably say he's like the closest one that got to he actually got to touch woman here. Everybody until today, until today, people still call me. Can you teach me how to do keratin? Can you teach me how to install extension? Can you teach me that? But it's not that simple, man. It's not like I can just be like, yeah, come over here, just watch me do one client. You can go ahead. It doesn't work that way. It's more you gotta be inside the salon. You know what I mean? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta be, see you all gotta, these gotta, situations. Yeah, so it's out. hard for me to say. At time, it might sound like I don't want to teach you, but it's not that. I don't want to just teach you like I, if you really want to learn then show that you really want to learn come yeah watch me shadow me you know get a job in the salon you know what i mean so you, they're reaching out to you asking these these techniques and how you do this how you do that yeah. what, what i, I want to ask you that too like what, what are some simple things that you can adopt from stylists that barbers could take and be like Okay, like I, I think I can add that into my repertoire. Simple, simple, none. There's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing simple, man. It called, man. But there's nothing simple. I, know, I was trying but to figure I think, how to ask this. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing, nothing simple, simple. But I feel but like, like, but I feel the the easiest thing for a barber to do that came from the salon would probably be color, as far as like. It's so easy to apply bleach on somebody's hair. Yeah, you make it as white uh, as light as possible, and then apply whatever color they want. Whether it could be green, yellow, blue, platinum, whatever it is. That's like the easiest. If they come with just regular hair with no color on it, nothing. That's very simple, right? Yeah. Worst thing, you just cut it short. A week later, you could try it again. You know what I'm saying? That's the beauty about dealing with short hair guys or whatever. But Talk about how it. hard it is. What's that? That someone fucked up their hair, bleach, or you know, coloring it by themselves at home. Oh, my correcting God. color. That's, that's got to be that's your what you one call nemesis, that, that, right? That's one of the things that you call um, color correction. Color in, correction. In yep. Okay. Color correction, by far, I think is the hardest job at Sally's had. Got you. Me, yeah, I watched. when it comes to certain <clears throat> certain type of color correction, I don't even get my hands on. 
You don't tell them. Be- you don't tell them. It might turn out. It might not. You might have to come back. I remember hearing yeah, you that. Tell you him, you tell him a hundred percent. You got to see. I learned this from a friend of mine. The most important service in the whole salon is the consultation. The yeah. consultation will save your ass, bro. Hundred percent. Because if you do not tell the client, you don't worry about what could happen to their hair. Yeah. And God forbid it goes that way. You're done. You're fucked. You know what I'm saying? But if what's you cover your, your opinion ass, on uh what's your opinion on waivers? You know, some have them sign a waiver yeah, before yeah. the you have to, yeah. I worked in a salon where that guy Bo that taught me how to do on uh, color, he had a lot of clients sign waivers. Whenever Explain he was to the barber he, audience what why so they would do that. Whenever they would let's say uh, how can I explain this quick? Okay, let's say you come to the salon virgin hair and you want to go lighter. And mm-hmm. I apply regular highlights, balayage, whatever it is that we're doing. It's going to leave to a, a pretty blonde. I respect it, right? But let's say the next client comes with a permanent jet black color that she bought from CVS box dye. And she wants the same look. That's not going to happen. So, one you cover your ass with consultation tell her look this could happen could break it might not get today it might go to an orange stage red you you got to go through stages to get to this level you yeah. see what i'm saying some girls don't understand that they don't care they seen kim kardashian was black and then she posted today she's blonde yeah that's a weed you see what i'm saying like <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like they don't understand that but no nah, i want it i want it okay that's when you present the waiver okay sign these Something happened. It was your choice, your decision. I explained to you what could happen. You didn't want to go with yeah. that. So that means no refund. That means 100%. that means yeah, nothing. Maybe it's, maybe she goes on a smear campaign and goes online and starts trashing you. That accounts for that too, right? Yeah, for everything. It covers your ass. Yeah. There's nothing she could do. She can't sue you. She can nothing. She it was her decision. She signed the waiver. You know what I mean? Cool. Okay, but, yeah, that, that's the thing I feel like maybe barbers don't know about yeah. the waiver. And, but uh, I did learn that sometimes it's not worth taking a client just for the money. Sometimes it's like when you know, usually when they sit on the chair and they start going off about the old um, stylist. <laughs> that's when you know. You see what I'm saying? You I like, always uh, change the subject. Yeah, yeah I, I just, saying, people just can't get my hair right. I don't know why. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, uh, so now anyway. you start asking. You start asking <laughs> the client, "What is it that you don't like about that?" Cl- that. Yeah, and right. you start to understand what type of client you're dealing with. And yeah, now I'm, like, you well, make- I'm like, let's focus less on your last barber and more on your hair. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So now like- you start learning. You start thinking, okay, is it worth me taking her? made this amount of money but this amount of headache and i'm gonna go home and i know i'm gonna get a text message from her saying it's not the way i want to hear or there's a spot leader you like i don't take that man like yeah. you know what i'm saying like i'm Some of the women you're doing i can't imagine yeah the and I'm, of, i do uh, i do a lot of influencers in miami like a lot bro like i i was looking i mean shit, dude let, let's look here <laughs> a lot so let's it's look here like, so here we got here we got your page I mean, I I can click. So that was that was one of your first few posts, I yeah. guess. After you, that was on me. That's when when I remember I told you I had deleted my Instagram. Yeah, I guess after the delete. So yeah, so then that's when I said, okay, I notice I'm doing something new, and if I don't hop back in social media, I'm not gonna get it popping like I was in the barber game. So I need to get back into it. Right. So I bet I could click any of these women. <laughs> yeah, I'll click this. This is a color I feel like a lot of people like and want. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna click on this woman. Bam! Mm-hmm. There's there's almost seventy thousand followers right there, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> so they're all like at the influencer yeah. or like Instagram model realm. That's Go cute. to the to the uh, where people tag me. You can see a lot of them in there too. Ah, here we go. Yeah, and um, yeah. First, yeah, I mean, at just... first it was it was hard, bro. It's constantly it hard. Hard when I say in a sense that um twenty-two thousand. 
are in a sense that it's kind of like um you, you got the most beautiful you scare, females yeah yeah you scare, <laughs> ever you scare of their you scare of their um them exposing you you know what i mean that's the biggest fear yeah because they have you a know, lot of so, eyeballs exactly they, could, they so, could turn that on you if they want so that's that's like one of the biggest challenges when knowing that bro at the end of the day they just regular human beings i like mean you you know what i mean there's eighty four thousand so, here <laughs> yeah just give people an idea so yeah man i mean you're crushing it though i, I like this little bouncy this <laughs> this little where'd you learn that from <laughs> <laughs> just not the few scene people do it you go ahead and imitate and try to do it you know what I mean? okay yeah, I was like, what's this bouncy? I mean, they got the reverse on them. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to play around with the uh, Vita editing here and there, try to make it fun. Yeah, you know? man. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, in, in, in terms of social media, mm -hmm. I, I got a feeling that you weren't a huge fan of it for a little bit at least, right? So not, not that I wasn't a huge fan, but I did notice that it took, in the barber game, it took me how can I it slowed me down. Yeah. To you want to cut to the point where you want a super perfect fade just to get a picture. Yeah. And that was slowing me down. So that's why I was like, man, fuck all this, man. I'm I'm done. You know, I'm, I just want to get my money. You know what I'm saying? Like I was yeah. like I told you I was losing passion for the game. That's why I do so, mine at the end of the day. My yeah. last one's always the content one. Yeah, but then you're tired. The end of the day is like you kind of. Nah, that, oh, you, you that's dead, my best word. Day. That's my best yeah? word. My, I feel like if me you came with me at the beginning of the day, I'd be like, I don't know if if there's anything it's not right. Still, it's the first. I feel cut like to day. me, the third or the fourth cut of the day. That's okay. when I'm already. When I'm warm up. Cruising. I'm warm up. Let's get yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Now okay, the I, last I, I two cuts of the day, you get a half ass job. <laughs> 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 not, not a half that, but you know what I mean. Like you're tired. You just right. like, oh, man, I'm like, I could probably yeah. wrap this up here. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so, especially yeah. usually the last the last two are they're like, come on, Dre, bro. Squeeze me, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, fuck, let's come on, man. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So um with the women, it's different. With the women, you don't rush. You take your sweet time. You know what I mean? You having conversation, you get to like mm -hmm. each appointment. Bro, there's an appointment that I'm with a client for nine hours, eight hours with the same client. So you learn, you bond with the client quicker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. They don't come to you as often, but when they come, they spend time with you. You Sometimes you go out and grab lunch with them or you order Uber Eats or whatever. You guys, you know, you actually get yeah. to uh, bond, bond with the client. So social media, when it comes to, to the female um, hairs, I feel like it's funner because you could get more creative and yeah. you could do a million things in one client on one yeah. client's here. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like you can get very creative. It's fun to me. Obviously I'm not a videographer. I don't never took class and none of that stuff. So I can't do what certain people do, but I've had fun doing the reels. Fun, and like, yeah. I, I love that. You know what I'm saying? It's I that extra like, log, just like we're talking about. I feel <laughs> like I'm getting, I feel like I'm getting better at it, and I also pay a lot more attention to people that I follow. They've been doing it longer than me. I try to like, kind of like mimic what they do, but also put a touch of my myself into that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean that's, that's part of this cool. podcast, dude. I, I want to show people the people mm -hmm. that don't have a gazillion followers, but they're killers mm -hmm. like yourself. Like you, you know, it. you're one of the best out there, of course, and. I feel like, you know, a lot of people might not know that because you're not one of these guys yeah. that's like, you know, yeah. so like that's, I'm doing my job on the podcast because yeah. <laughs> not that I, my platform is like some astronomical thing is going to get all those views, but Correct. if yeah. I could just shed light on someone yeah. that like is doing as well as you are and is like just a killer you know what I mean? Then thank you. And that's the job. That. That's the job of it. Now, now answer yeah. me this. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you got all that downtime or processing time, right? Mm -hmm. Color and everything. Um, or maybe, I don't know. My old boss used to do the, the hair, uh, the uh, dryer or the fucking thing. It sits on your head. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, she, she would do that. Yeah. I feel like just to buy time, <laughs> just to like, nah, nah, I'm gonna do so, this while I'm running so over the, here. No, so the blow, the 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 hair dry actually, there's certain treatments that you do mm -hmm. that activates with heat. Yeah. So you have no choice but to put that. Gotcha. Now, when it comes to color, it actually speeds up the the, the process time. So sometimes okay. if you see a stylist doing a regular color and puts the heater, it's yeah. because he's trying to move faster. Or, ah. yeah, so usually- so, so Do you do like, ever do multiple people that way? Yeah. yeah. Okay, sometimes, yeah. I, sometimes I got three people at a time, sometimes two. Okay, that's, that was Depen the question. The way, yeah. the, the way I judge is depending on what service they're getting done. If it's something that I know I'm going to be with that per person for a long time and they're going to spend a lot of money, I try to make them that's third time. I don't want nobody interference that, okay. you know what I mean? But that's if it's something fair. quick, if it's something quick, and I don't know, like I said, root root touch of covering gray, something like that no matter what, you're gonna have to see for 40 minutes, then I could squeeze maybe a haircut in between a blow dry or maybe one of my guys, you know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. So I learned yeah. that you make a lot more money when you're working on multiple clients at once. Absolutely. I don't like I don't like to do it, but sometimes you have to be smart and know that, you know? Yeah. Know how to maximize it and everything. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh I'm gonna dive into uh mental health a little bit. Right? Okay. Let's get into mental health. Because it seems like you've climbed this mountain, right? You you've kind mm -hmm. of like you've seen it at all levels and you're you're doing well. And I mean, can you do any better? You think? Absolutely. What What do you think you can do better? So that you, that you haven't to done. To me, this right here, this podcast that I'm doing with you, is huge because the people that know me, my weakness is public speaking. Yeah, talking to social media, doing video, explaining. It's not me. I never. I was never. Um, I was never that that person that wanted to be in front line of every dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, same. Now I'm trying to get to that. I'm trying to start doing that type of stuff more. I feel like that's gonna take me to the next level. You know what I mean? Like Absolutely. I feel like people will be able to get to know you even though they never came to you. Does that make sense? I feel For like sure, you could, because yeah. on picture, you can judge somebody or you could be, okay, have an idea what type of person you're going to be dealing with. But when you start seeing videos, you get to know that person better. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like that could help me to get my name out there more. Absolutely. I mean, I'm learning a ton about you too, dude, that I had no idea about. Yeah. And like, I, I could just judge from pictures. So mm -hmm. this is, I mean, it's so, part of part of the podcast too i'm i'm getting to know you and that's that's why i told you before we really don't prepare for this but i'm like yeah. we just talk man it's just like yeah. we do every day right and uh i'm not gonna lie this is this my man zin i, I gotta give it to him he convinced me to do this because i i told him what, what plans i had he said bro trust me talk to matt he he yeah he don't feel so i feel I like he's, his... i feel like he's kind of on the same mission too he wants to do a little more like yeah. this and put himself out there because barbers are introverts a lot yeah. of barbers don't like having the spotlight on them right and it's and, and this some is, people love some people love yeah. that man. Like, some man. people love that but i feel like you're gonna find a lot more that don't compared mm -hmm. that was definitely me i'm more of a quiet let me let my word speak for itself yeah but i did learn that you want to be more successful you need to pull more, expose yourself a little more. Yeah, use you know your I mean? voice. Yeah. That voice is one of the most powerful yeah. things. I feel like to me, Maddie, it was more of a English not being my first language. Yeah, so that's so, another hurdle. So that, sure. exactly. So I, I noticed that for myself, if I get nervous, I notice that my English doesn't come out as good as in my sound right now. You know what I mean? Like when I get yeah. nervous, I start like forgetting shit or like I start right. studying. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, but that's the example you're setting for another person like yourself that right. English is not their first language. You're you're putting yourself out there. You're like, hey, 
I, I get nervous too about this shit. Like, like <laughs> it, it's another fucking yeah. wrinkle I have to iron out because, yeah. you know, I'm but not. If I feel like me. if you you put the most successful influencer in my chair right now, bro, I won't even. You just another client to me. I passed yeah. that stage already. You see what I'm saying? Before right. I was shaking, holding blow dry, like. Fuck, I got it. You know, nah, I don't give a fuck with Beyonce in my chair. You know what I mean? Like, to me, you just another one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like there's no woman in this world that will make me nervous when it comes to doing hair anymore. Right. Is that what if, sense? What if it was someone... So I wrestled with this, too. I was like... Like, I have, like, a, a comedian I'm a huge fan of or something that comes in the okay. shop. I'm like, oh, dude, what the fuck? But if like Bradley Cooper walked in, I think I would have been more like, dude, come yeah. on, leave him alone. Like, just treat him normal. Oh. Especially the people that are too famous, you don't want to act. Any I never, right? I never got anybody that's as like a uh, on TV. Let's say, yo, uh, the majority of the people that I got were like, um, influencers. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I did. A lot of male um, celebrities as a yeah. barber, you know what I mean. So I got my hands on a few of those, and it was a little challenging at first, I would say. But in a woman field, I haven't done that, so I can't really compare. You know what I mean? Who knows, mate? If you pay attention a little more, this is like the new TV. Right. <laughs> These yeah. TikTokers, yeah, it's true. Though. It's true. So like. You know what I mean? Sure. To some people, they're like, oh, my God, like, he cuts her or he does her mm -hmm. hair? Like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, and it's crazy because there's certain influencers that I do that nobody gives a fuck. I'm sorry yeah. to say that, but nobody gives a fuck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. And there's certain ones, Matty, that I do, and as soon as I post, bro, they my move the needle blows, bro. Like, yeah. Wow, wow. How did this happen? And that, you know what I'm saying? You don't really know how much power that influencer has. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like sometimes their voice might be louder than an actual celebrity. Sometimes. Yeah, I mean, how's yeah. that make you feel though? That's gotta be. A, that's gotta give you some sort it, of. It make, it make it makes you feel like you accomplished something. Yeah. But at the same time, it makes you more hungry because. Yeah. It's kind of like you fiend for that same feeling again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Once you posted a picture of me and whoever it was, and the 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 outcome of it, it's kind of like, wow, this feels good. How much compliments I'm getting, how much uh, people are talking about. It makes you feel good. So you kind of like fiend for the same feeling. And you kind of like, okay, I need another one the same way. I need another one. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's kind of that's like your drive. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. You're scratching the itch. Cool. Now you're getting real itchy. <laughs> So it's pretty, <laughs> like <a dope> film. <laughs> but it's pretty cool you know what I'm saying? like it's pretty cool no doubt so is there anything else that kind of so you obviously want to be become more extroverted you want to yeah. put yourself out there more is there anything else especially after you know it seems like you finally get a, a second to reflect mm -hmm. and look back on your time and it's like man like i wouldn't have it any other way and I don't have you know anything I mean? else as far as like um I cannot say not that I don't have anything involving hairstylists, but the majority of my goals are really not in the field. In the in the in the yeah, in the personal goals field. too. Yeah, that's you what I'm what talking saying? about. Personal health. So the majority of my goals and I have, have have nothing to do with the um with the stylist world, let's just say. You know, let's, I got let's transition into your personal life, man. I know, I know you're a dad. I know it, it seems like you're enjoying your life. You travel, correct? You know, you, you're you're really balling out, and I feel like you've earned it, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. like, no, talk I'm, about. I'm your... not balling out, but yeah, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> balling out. I, I I try to act like I'm balling out, but not. <laughs> <laughs> not traditional balling out, but yeah. like you know, you're taking time off. For yourself yeah. to go travel, but I'm I'm, I'm having I'm having I'm having fun traveling. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is something new that I I don't know. I just picked up. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna go somewhere every month if I can. And it's yeah. seeing okay. different places, different culture. All that is kind of like it's inspiring somehow. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. lately, what I've been thinking, 
this is just a thought because I never try anything, but I was like, I'm, I'm going to be doing so much traveling. Maybe I could try to get to do here when I'm on the road. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. kind of one of those things that I think about now. Yeah. Maybe, reach out to people and ask. If, exactly. You know, so now yeah. when I travel, there's going to be a purpose behind it. You know what I mean? You could pay for the Excuse trip. <laughs> even, even if it doesn't involve money. Yeah. Just the the um the network, experience. just the recognition, yeah. the experience, exactly, stuff like that. So I'm not really too too much about oh I need to travel just so I can make money. I don't really think like that. I feel like if you do anything in life with passion, money will come with it. You know what I mean? So hundred percent, man. I feel like if you do shit just for the money, eventually you're gonna. Fall out of love, or you might not want to do it no more. You know, because it can't be the only thing. It can't be the main thing either. Sometimes. Exactly. So, and I love the hairstylist world right now. <clears throat> if I have to choose, I would say I, I like that barber atmosphere better than the salon. Yeah. But I feel that like people respect their stylists more than they respect the barbers. Hundred they, they look at us different than they looked at us. I remember introducing myself and telling, oh, I'm a barber. And they're just, oh, you're just a barber, whatever. Completely different tell, reaction. Yeah. But whenever you're telling you a stylist, like they respect you a little more, which I don't think it should be that way because I feel like barber mm -hmm. works a lot harder, bro. I can tell you because I've been in both fields and the barbers, they really, really hustle for their money. You know what I mean? No doubt. I talk about all the time to people. I'm like, man, it's just like we're always trying to fight that perception mm -hmm. of like people mm -hmm. thinking like not even from a money standpoint, because that's one thing, too. People think you can't make a good living. They automatically put you in a box. Correct. Say if yeah, it's true. someone in business or someone, you know, like my, my wife, she's a Spanish professor. Right. So okay. that that academia realm all the professors and things like that they have no idea how far you can take this and yeah. they, they like i tell the story one of my wife's early mentors she super wealthy husband passed away who was super wealthy mansion housekeepers butlers pool boys my wife's over there you know following her around helping her out with whatever and he's like, oh, what's your husband do? Oh, he's a barber. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> fuck that up. You know, see, like, that's, a, that's fucked up. But see, I don't like that, bro. You yeah, know what I mean? like, I'm like, like, but like, I've always kind of like, this is part the worst, of the podcast too. You know, you the, the regular part, people man, of you. What's that? The worst part is that I used to think like this, bro. Like, how come nobody give us the respect that we, des that, that we deserve, but... If you got a new job coming up, the first person you think is your barber. Yeah. You got you got a date coming up. The first person you think of, oh, I gotta call my barber, gotta get a cut. I got a date. Holiday. You got you got holidays. You got court days. You got picture dates. Whatever the fuck it is that you got going on in life, the first person that comes to your life is your barber. Hundred percent. But why we don't give them the respect they they deserve? I don't know. You see what I'm saying? So I don't like that. Nobody looks at a barber like the way they look at a doctor. But yeah. most likely you need the barber more than you need a doctor in one year. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you might you might be like, I need my barber today. I really need you today, Maddie. COVID told you probably you probably won't need a doctor for five years. You see what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's what COVID what taught us, man. And I knew it too. My boss yeah. was freaking out in the salon. That's why I worked in the salon during COVID uh -huh. times. And she was crying because I think she she loves she loves being a socialite. She loves the personal interaction. She loves talking. Mm -hmm. So that that was, you know, crushing her for sure. But she yeah. was worried about the clients like leaving. And I'm like, let them cut their own hair. Trust me. They coming back. They're gonna come flying 100%. back. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> Even Perfect. even sometimes I notice like um the more you do it, I feel like the better you get and your quality becomes better. 
Yeah. And once your quality becomes better, money goes up, correct? For sure. I notice that you lose clients sometimes because of your prices going up. For sure. But if you believe in your work and you really, you know, taking your time, I would say, and, and really showing that you care about that client, yeah. she could go somewhere else and pay cheaper, but she's going to come back to you and pay that extra dollar that, she, that you deserve. You know, I know multiple times it happened to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're like, nah, go ahead, do your thing. I know what I did for you. I know how much I took care of you. Yeah. I'm not aware you coming back. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ever sweat it? You ever tell them like, ah, oh, there she is. She's back. I ha- I, so I, I did, um, I don't feel like I should be putting this business out there, but yeah. What kind of? I, yeah. I, 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 I did had a situation where I was collabing with an influencer. I'm not going to mm-hmm. give no name. Yeah. And Christmas time came around the time. And this girl was on TV at the time. She was doing some type of reality show. So to me, it was a good exposure. So I was right. doing her hair for free. She was shouting me out. And that was kind of an agreement, right? Holiday came and I told her I couldn't get her in because, oh, this is my money time. I need to get right. money. You know, Holiday, I mean, you know, any barber, Holiday's yeah. the busiest time of the year. So I told her, yeah, I could still get you in, but... I'm gonna have to charge you something, you know what I mean? Right. And she was not cool with it. She said, nah, I don't wanna pay, blah, 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 this and that, I'll just wait. And then she went and got her done somewhere else and ended up paying that person. So now she comes back to me asking me to fix it. So now I'm like, I told you to come to me. I do your hair the whole year for free. And the only time that I asked you to pay me, you'd say, no, you go somewhere else. They mess up your hair. Now you come back to me asking me to fix it. You see what I'm saying? So now I got two choices. Charge the shit out of you or cut you off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because to me, that was a uh, disrespect. You know what I mean? Like to me, it was a slap in the face. It's a good story. What'd you do? I cut her off. Cut her off. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's that's. I feel like I feel like I'm in a, your time. I feel, yeah, I feel like I'm in a level where I could do that. You Does can. That make sense? I don't want to sound cocky. I don't want nobody listening to this fuck. I mean, oh, he's so nice. Nah, it's not like that. No, that's you but giving feel, it back to someone who yeah, thought they I feel could like do, I can do whatever they want. Exactly. And you said, nah, I value myself a little more than that. You know what I mean? I feel like <laughs> it was more than just like, nah, man. Like I feel like I, I really putting time on your hair for me for you to go around and do me like that so right it's no hard feeling you can come back to me you just gotta pay yeah you sometimes I mean? family can come into the equation that too it's 100%. like 100 percent. it's like Anybody i don't care family. they can buy me a fucking house i, I gotta go get my wife and kid <laughs> after this yeah, <laughs> like, <exactly. laughs> yeah, man. let's get into your daily routine and then we'll kind of wrap this thing up man okay Let's uh so walk me through kind of a day in the life. I know I know there's a lot of variation, but when yeah. when you're in um, the salon, when you're in the first of all, I never even got into your salon. Like where where do you work now? So I worked in a salon in Midtown Miami. Okay. It's cool. I rent the chair though. I don't work for the salon. Gotcha. I haven't I haven't worked for, for like one person for a few years now, man. Like I've been on my own for a long time. That's cool. I I like the idea of being around um, stylists or even barbers versus a uh, salon suite just because I feel like you can influence more, you can learn more, and you get motivated more by seeing the people around you doing something. Take the words things. out of my mouth. That's you always what, what so, scared me about doing something so that's by the myself. only reason I'm against uh, salon suites. You know what I mean? But yeah. So so, walk right, me man. through waking up in the morning. What's the first thing you do, bro? At, when do you go to mo- bed? I'm not a morning person, bro. No, I'm really, okay. I'm not at all, bro. Was it always that but, way, or did you always? Everybody okay. used to make fun of me. Like it, <laughs> <laughs> my barber's always said, "Don't talk to Dre until noon, bro. Do not <laughs> just leave him alone. Like not even a smile out of my face <laughs> until noon. It's crazy. I don't know why. I just I was never a morning person, man. But um. Not that I'm grumpy or in a bad mood. I just don't talk. I just, just don't talk. Right. My first appointment is just like, 
don't leave me alone. We're like, oh, you try to tell me, like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's crazy. Saying, like, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you feel me? Like, the afternoon, it's like, okay, now nah, I'm talking. Sometimes I talk a little too much, you know? Like, but, um, yeah, I, I get up, I, I make it to the salon by 9 or 10, depends on the clients. The salon opens at 10. Okay. But I have the key since I rent. So if the client needs me to get there at 7 in the morning, if the money makes sense, I'm going to be there at 7 in the morning. 5, I'm going to be there at 5. You know what I'm saying? There's time that I went in at 2 in the morning. It's crazy. The money talks in this field. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, for the most, I get there at 10. Work till, on the average, I'm out the shop by 4 on the average. Okay, not bad. There's there's time like i said there's time that i'm there yeah too. situational 12, 11, yeah. exactly so um i try to to maintain a healthy lifestyle yeah i'm very heavy into jujitsu and nice. weightlifting. Okay. those those are like what i try to do for the most to keep me in shape but i'm also riding bikes i'm also playing tennis i'm also riding my longboard like i'm very active i hate fucking hate being home bro yeah i okay. i do not like being home i like to be outside doing something you know what i mean okay um what I time love, of the day do you fit in uh weightlifting or whenever <laughs> sometimes before work sometimes in between clients sometimes after work okay yeah. I always get um, weird with like i'm like i don't know how my hands are going to react to like being tight you know what i mean Sometimes yeah. it, it works out better, but like I feel like those days you push yourself, yeah, like gonna be a little. Like, but yeah, I try. I try to fit in whenever I can. You yeah. know, because I'm. I don't. I don't have those natural genes where you just like bend over one time and boom, you got abs. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's people like that, bro. They just there flex are. from stretching and they got big arms. You know, that's not yeah. me. So <laughs> I gotta yeah, put in work. Out. You know, I gotta work, man. But whatever, you maintain me in a in a in a slim. Where do you think the type. hard work came from? Hard work, as far as what, like, uh, well, what the salon, the you to be a like, hard worker in life, bro? I don't, I don't. Mean, you think I your dad think, maybe think, was a soccer early I can't on? Say, I can't say you learned that from somebody. I don't think you can learn that, bro. I think you just got it, or you don't. Yeah. I, to me, to me, it's one of those like you can change too. You can gain it if you don't have it. Yeah, because I, I, I wouldn't consider so. I had a work ethic until I cut my big toe off with a lawnmower. Oh, Something hell. in my brain after that, dude, shifted. I got in a, I got in an accident. I was a I graduated high school that summer, okay. helping my dad cut grass, and I got in a bad accident. After cut the it was it wasn't too bad. I still got a half a toe, <laughs> whatever. But it clicked something in my brain to like not take shit for granted anymore. Yeah. And like everything in my life, I was just ready to move on and do more. And like I broke up with a girlfriend I was with like five years. Like I I, yeah. I got in the best shape of my life, and it's like. All of a sudden, I had a work ethic when before I didn't have it, but I grew up with so, parents that definitely busted their ass. So I feel so like there's a little me, bit of that in there. So you too. want me to? You want me to? Go ahead, man. Say what I think on your situation was. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. The breakup. I think that was for you. That was probably. I noticed that. Yeah. Every time somebody, more. every time somebody breaks up with their significant other, the First thing that comes to the head is like, I'm gonna get in shape. I'm gonna get my money right. I'm gonna. It's almost like a you feel the need to prove that person they yeah. fucked up by leaving you or vice versa. You feel me? Yeah. So, but listen, but listen to this. Listen to how shitty this is. <laughs> so I didn't break up with my girlfriend. Would break up with me. Uh, I let her nurse me back through the whole toe injury. I come back from that. I get in great shape. Then I break up with her. <laughs> oh, so then, so then you were just being. I back. think you were just being greedy. I think you started getting more plate. Yeah, by other yeah, shorties. That, they say you know a what? Bit of that I, in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
<laughs> I can do really on bed on this side, man. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So, uh, I don't know. There's a little me, bit of there's a lot of there's a lot of nuances to it. There's yeah. a lot of different things that played into it for sure. To me, I feel the the motivation as far as like to be a hard worker is just like if I want these, nobody's gonna come to my house and knock on the door. Like, Dre, do you want this car? Dre, you want yeah. it? You gotta go get it, bro. I mean, I, I'm old enough to understand that. You know what I'm saying? Plus, being um, good at something helps. I right. want to continue doing something I'm good at. Right. Yeah. When yeah. people say, but, "Why do you but, work so much?" Because I'm good at it. <laughs> like, Maddie, but let me say, let me say this though. Yeah. I do believe that you could be good at anything you put your mind into. It. 100%. I don't think you are born with with um with that particular talent. I could be wrong, but I think if you if Michael Jordan was born in Brazil, or Argentina, he would be the best soccer player ever because he's naturally athletic and he just put he believed that he could be the best soccer player you see what i'm saying like yeah i feel like whatever you put your mind into you could become yeah some people got the privilege that they learn faster or they just yeah quicker you know what i'm saying yeah it helps but to me you don't gotta agree, agree with me but to me hard work beats talent any day yeah that's just me you know it's a saying? good bridge too like at one point the two got to connect Fact. You, you can't Fact. have one without the other, Fact. right? Yeah, yeah. Especially to you can have all the talent right? in the world, but like if you never really took the leap, how do you yeah. know how far you can take it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, sure. So on that note, Dre, I really appreciate you coming on. You got anything in the yeah. works coming next that you're kind of outside of getting on more? You got anything coming up? Anything you want to promote? Not, not yet. Hopefully soon, though. Hopefully soon. I'm making some moves right now that I think is gonna be uh, it's gonna be good and, and and entertaining for the for the public and for the stylist barber world. You know, I'm trying to okay figure something out on that sense. I don't want to speak too much about it because yeah. I don't like, you know, I'm kind of like quiet when I do certain things. We'll talk a little bit after this, man. Yeah. Okay. But I'm also, I'm also known for starting shit and not wanting to finish. So, <laughs> so <laughs> that's like my biggest flaw, bro. Like, I, like I'm like, fuck, I be so motivated. Oh, let's do this, that, that. And then one little thing goes south and I'm like, ah, oh, man, forget that. You know what I'm saying? And then yeah. a few months later, I'll be like, I shouldn't continue and see what happened. You know, like, yeah, it's a lot of a lot of situation I've been in life. I'm gonna just give you an example, just going back a little bit before I jumped into the the cosmetology world. Yeah, I actually started doing micropigmentation. And uh, I, I, I want to get into that too. So I started doing it. There was nobody doing it. Um, oh, like, before barbering, you said? No, no, I was a barber. Okay, then I was it. in transition to leave the barber shop, but I, I, that can, is the craziest shit, man. My jujitsu coach came up to me one day. Yeah. And he said, Dre, do you know about these bar? And he told me, and I, I'm going to keep it a buck. I looked at him like, what the fuck is you talking about, man? Like, yeah. I never heard, seen none of this stuff. Anyway, he told me, one of my students, he owns two gyms, one in Boston, one in Florida. So he was telling me, one of my students in Boston is making a hell of money. He got two Lambos, a crib, and this he's making so much money. So he started telling me. So I'm just listening, listen, listen. So I'm like, okay. Then I asked him, he was he a stylist or a barber? He said, no, he was a fucking construction worker. He used to build pool. Wow. So now I'm like, wait a minute, he's making that type of money? So yeah. now I go home and do my homework on it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And bro, the money is insane. I don't know now, but that time there was nobody doing it. It was people flying from all over the world to see this yeah. dude. Now that he was bodying people, like he was healing everybody's front line bro. it was horrible bro <laughs> and i'm like how are people paying this much money for these bro so yeah. as soon as i seen that i'm like i'm gonna take over this shit. Yeah. Later, i'm not, not shit on anybody that's doing micro pigment right now that yeah. was my mentality you know what i mean yeah i started to shop around for see who's doing classes and this and that i found somebody in florida i think he was charging five thousand at a time so i went and took the class on my first day, on my first day on the class, when I'm doing my model, mm -hmm. my work shit on every work he ever done. 
Yeah. <laughs> all my mind. I'm supposed to be learning from this dude was a firefighter. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, this dude is doing micro people. Like, but you never fucking line somebody's like, how do you know? Like, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You just didn't add up. So I was like, nah, I'm gonna take over this shit. So I started that at the same time that I left the barbershop. Mm. So now I got two new things on my lap. So I now I need to pick. I gotta mm. put more time into this or the other one, you know. The issue I was running with the micropigmentation was that people were asking me, how can, okay, you see, he said, how can you're bald and you don't have it? Mm. So it was, that's, imagine being a dentist with no teeth, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's kind of <laughs> like, so it was hard for me to, it was hard for me to tell them, I don't trust this fucking firefighter or construction worker to do my lineup. Like if it was Maddie Blaze ah, or fucking yeah. Zeno or Patty Cuz doing it, I would have been had it. You feel me? Yeah. But if, if that wasn't the case, I was the only barber art I knew that was actually doing it. Right. <clears throat> so it's like, bro, I can't do it on myself. You know what I'm saying? Like I got clients, I, uh, uh, friends of mine right now that they are barbers. They asking me now, Dre, where did you do it? How much was it? now they asking me? This is nine years ago, bro. I was already doing it. You see what I'm saying? Man, no I one did was doing it. My then. brother, I did my cousins, three, two of my cousins, three of my boys. And it was starting to, I had people came out to me asking, yo, you want to open something up? Like it was starting to like kind of like move a little bit, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I needed to make a decision. It was that or the stylist, you know what I mean? So I just decided to go with a because there was no, you couldn't pay me enough for me to get it done. You couldn't. Just yeah. because, like I said, there was no barber. If you never did a front lineup, you're not touching me with permanent ink. Bro. It's not <laughs> happening. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. That was the most um, challenging situation for me, I feel like, when it came to the micro pigmentation. That's why I decided to let go. You know so, I mean? you're not going to bring it back? Nah. No. Because I feel like it got oversaturated, and I feel like a lot of people are doing it, you know. And I feel like if you're if you're a barber, uh, you should have some knowledge in this, or at least try to see what it's like. It might be something big there for you. Yeah, why not? <clears throat> but for me, it don't make no sense for me to jump into that right now. I'm not gonna leave the the the, the hairstylist world for that, you know. Man? Yeah. Plus, you kind of need a, the right space for it a little bit too, right? Man, I guess you could do it in a chair. You yeah, you could do it, bro. You can yeah. do it. And it was the most, it's the most comfortable, easy. Like it's, bro. You are doing dots, bro? There's no, yeah. there's no like, <laughs> there's no science to it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I was thinking of more only... of like a, from a sanitation, but yeah, if you could do it in a, if you could do it in a tattoo parlor. You could do it in a barber shop, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? You got your hands full already with what it is. Yeah, bro. right now, yeah, man. And I'm still trying to, like, you know, get more. I want to get this year, I want to try to get into doing events, man. Like, in Miami, where I live right now, there's always something going on. They have, like, um, swim week. They have um, whatever right. week and art week and whatever. And there's a lot of events that goes around here, you know? But my goal... One of my goals for these years is to try to get into one of those events and actually be there, do behind doors, doing all the models before they walk down the, the exactly. The Dude, that that there. that was my view of you before I got to know you a little bit. Yeah, I was like, I bet this guy's doing fashion shows and shit in uh, the back. Yeah, man, that's I want to though, man. I okay, want to, yeah. but not yet. You can definitely I feel do. like I feel like um, I feel like I I got the right people around me that could guide me to that to that um. That route, I think it's gonna depend a lot on me to, you know what I'm saying? And I Push feel like yourself, I'm man. Sky's the limit. I know I know you can Pax. do it. Pax, you yeah. can do it, man. That's one Look of the advice that I tell already. Look that's one of the advice that I tell everybody. I'm like, people always say, Well, what 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 advice would you give somebody coming in? And to me, the best advice I could give is don't get too comfortable and always um don't be scared to work outside your comfort zone. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. don't don't be scared to get out the comfort zone. I feel like that's gonna be what's gonna make you reach that next level of success that you're trying to reach. You know what I mean? Right. When you get too comfortable. It's like, okay, and then what? You know? 
Yeah. And take the signs if they're there too. Sometimes yeah. there's something that pushes you to uh, mm -hmm. outside your comfort and to zone. Me, to me, that's one of one of the um for one of the best things about me is that I get bored easy. Yeah. So I get bored easily that so if it's nothing, you know, out of the ordinary happening right now on my daily routine, something's wrong. I need to like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to move. Okay, what's yeah. next? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I did it. I moved. I, I became a stylist. Okay. Now I'm getting a hand of it. I'm, now what's next? Oh, I want to do showcase. Okay, I'm doing showcase. Now what's next? You know what I'm like? There's always yeah. something that I want to uh, achieve as far as like, and I'm not going to lie. Every time it, it gets scary and scary. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> yeah. I feel like the more scary it gets, uh, you know, the bigger the success is gonna the bigger, be. So, yeah. kinda, so I'm kind of like, what is it? This, the this is the very fear the juice, right? I see. Like yeah. this was a very big move for me. This podcast with you. Hopefully, is is the first of many to come. You know what I mean? Absolutely, man. man. It gets hopefully easier. It yeah. Hopefully, you this. I mean, you you make it pretty much a lot easier than I expected to. You know, like it, it's yeah. easy to talk to you, but shit, I seen some podcasts that I'm like. Man, I, it's, I don't want to be on that seat right now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. No, no, man. Yeah, we're, we're just we're just talking. We're sharing your journey, man. And you crushed it today, brother. Appreciate Great. It, man. I appreciate you for coming on, my man. Um, we're gonna we're gonna disperse this thing, man. Show people Thank your story. You. Thank All you, right? bro. Appreciate you having me, bro. All right, Dre, you're a special guy, and I appreciate Hello, you making guy. the time tonight, man. Thank you, no doubt. Take care. We'll keep in touch. All right, man. Thanks for watching another episode of the Your Barber Podcast. New episodes come out weekly on Sunday. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify to be notified when new content is posted. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.